All right, welcome back, everybody. Um, today we're going to do two sections in one. They're two fairly short sections. Uh, the first is Newton's method, and the second is antiderivatives. The reason antiderivatives is a little shorter is because we did cover them a little bit in a prior video. All right, so let's talk about Newton's method for just a little bit. Uh, Newton's method is a technique to approximate the solution to an equation f of x equals zero. So what it's some function and you're setting it equal to zero. Essentially it uses the idea of tangent lines to, um, to get better and better guesses. Your initial estimate could be found by graphing or the intermediate, um, intermediate value theorem or just guessing. All right, then the tangent lines that you create make your guess better and better. So the first guess for f of x, we're going to call that xn. And your formula is going to be that our next guess is going to equal our current guess minus our function at our current guess divided by the derivative of our function at our current guess. As long as the derivative doesn't equal zero. All right? That's essentially Newton's method. So let's uh, do one or two examples, and then we'll be out. All right, so if I said... f of x equals 1 half x squared minus 3. Now Newton's method will find the roots of the equation. All right. So to get a good estimate, you would have to say, where does this equal 0? Well, 2 squared is 4, right? Well, let's see. Let's let's just do an estimate. So I have one half x squared equals three, x squared equals six, and then when I square root it, x. All right. So two squared is four, three squared is nine. So it's between two and three, right? And I made that guess fairly mathematically because I did a quick solve of this equation and said the square root of 6 is somewhere between 2 and 3. I'm not sure where, but it doesn't matter where. Right? Because all we need is an initial guess. So I'm going to say that my xn, my initial guess, or x0, is going to be 3. So if my f of x equals 1 half x squared minus 3, and my derivative is going to be just plain old x, I can then use Newton's method to say to, into my equation. So my equation's up here, so I do my initial guess minus the function over the derivative. Okay, so my x my x zero right x to the n plus one equals x n which is three minus and i'm going to put three into my function three squared is nine half of nine is four and a half minus three is 1.5 all right and my derivative at three is just plain old three so when I do the math here, I got 3 minus a half equals 2.5. So 2.5 is now my next guess, or my new xn. So xn is now 2.5. All right. So now I need my function. Here, I'll keep my function and derivative on the screen. What I'd like you to do at this point is pause the video, run 2.5 through your function, run 2.5 through your derivative, and let's see where we're at. All 
Okay. So I got to do Newton's method again. X to the N plus one equals 2.5 minus. Now, when I took 2.5 and I ran it through, I got 0 0.125 divided by 2.5. And that is going to equal something like 2.499489 yeah. um, so you may need a calculator but we're not going to do too many more guesses so looks like we're closing in now on something very very close to two and a half all right so um, at this point, usually we would stop because at this point, like I said, a calculator is needed and for my class, you do not get one. Um, but if you were to do it again, you would get something even closer and closer and closer. All right, so that gives you a feel for just the process of Newton's method. Here's the type of problem you could encounter on homework, a quiz, or even an exam. It could say something like find the x-coordinate of the point where where the curve y equals x cubed minus x crosses the line y equals 1. All right. So we want to know where the curve crosses the line y equals 1. Now y equals 1 is a horizontal line and it is just above, right? If we have a graph, there's y equals 1 but I'd really love to know where it cross y equals zero. But I can say x cubed minus x equals one. But if I wanted to know where this whole thing crosses zero, I could say x cubed minus x minus one equals zero. And now use Newton's method from here, right? We need to use Newton's method to get roots of an equation. So we need to have the equation equal zero, all right? So here's what I'd like you to do, right? If f of x equals x cubed minus x minus one, I need f of one and I need f of two. All right, so I'm gonna ask you at this point to pause the video, run one through, run two through, and let's see what you get. Okay, so hopefully you ran them through. Uh, for f of one, I got negative one. And for f of two, I got five. And since the function is continuous, the intermediate value theorem says there is a place where the function equals zero somewhere between one and two. So as long as I know it's somewhere between one and two, I can say that my initial guess is one all right so now there's my function i like writing out the derivative um just because i like things on paper so i got three x squared minus one so if i ran it through my function f of 1 we already know is negative 1. We did that one already. And now let's do the derivative. And I get 2. You can always check my work. But I get 2. So now let's do Newton's method. All right. So Newton's method says take your initial guess 1 and subtract the, the function over the derivative. 
and that would equal three halves. And again, that's somewhere between one and two also, so it looks like we're doing just fine. So my next guess, my one point five. All right. So now I need you to do f of one point five. I need f prime at one point five in order to get my components for Newton's method. So go ahead, pause the video. And why don't you do that now, and we'll talk about the answers on the back. All right, so hopefully you ran the 1.5 through. I got 0 0.875 and 5.75. And now let's do our Newton's method. I got 1.5 minus 0 0.875 over 5.75. And now we're wading into the weeds a little bit. So this will probably be the last time, last iteration of Newton's method that I would do. You should get something like 1.34783, something like that. Any more iterations of Newton's method, you probably would need a calculator. Okay. So let's take a look at 4.8 now. 4.8 is antiderivatives. And antiderivatives are important, not so much as a concept by themselves, but it's just the idea of doing the, the process of the derivative backwards, all right? Because when we start getting into integral calculus, we're going to use the concept of antiderivatives in an effort to do an integral, all right? So I just really want to talk about First, let's talk, let's talk through the steps in doing the power rule. So if I had y equals x cubed plus 4, y prime would be what? It would be 3x squared, right? And so the first step would be take my exponent, multiply times my coefficient, Multiply times the coefficient. Right? So equals new coefficient. Then you decrease the exponent. By one. Okay, so now let's talk about how to go backwards. So going from 3x squared, let's see if we can go back. Let, what are the steps to go backwards? Well, I'm going to start with my last step. Decrease the exponent by 1. So what's the reverse of that? The reverse of that is I want to increase the exponent by 1. So now I have x cubed. And if I'm doing exponent times my coefficient for the new exponent, right? I want to take my coefficient and divide by the new exponent. So my coefficient is 3 and I'm dividing by my new exponent 3. Okay? And that will get me to the old coefficient. So y equals x cubed. So I'm going to increase the exponent. by 1, and then I'm going to take that new exponent and divide by the coefficient. So and then we get back to x cubed. Well, we almost got back to x cubed plus 4. We didn't quite get there. Now, the reason we didn't get there is because when we did our derivative, the, plus, the derivative of any constant is 0. All right? 
So we can't reverse the process because anything times zero is still zero. So basically what we need to do is we need to just say that there's there might be some constant on the end. Right? So I'm going to say there's a plus C on the end. Now C could be zero. Right? Which means that there is no constant on at the end. But C could be one, could be two, could be three. Could be negative, could be a decimal, could be a fraction, doesn't matter. It could be any number, any real number, all right? So we have to have that plus C there just to make sure that we are doing okay. And this is a key for antiderivatives, and it will also be a key for indefinite integrals. So make sure that that plus C is there, otherwise your teacher may take off. Uh, at this point, it's just a matter of practice. Like I said, it's, the, uh, it's getting comfortable with the idea of reversing the process. So let's practice. So if I have f of x equals x to the fifth, the antiderivative is denoted by big F. So if I have little f and I say I want the antiderivative, give me big F. If I have little g, the antiderivative would be give me big G. All right, so I want to increase the exponent by 1, so that's x to the 6th, and then divide by that new exponent. There you go. However, I need a plus c just in case the original had a constant added on to it. And I don't know if it did or didn't. All right, so if you have something that looks like this, first thing I would do is I would bring it to the numerator and make it a rational exponent. So that would be x to the negative one half. The reason I would do that is we're doing steps to reverse the power rule, remember. So we need something that looks like a power function. So now let's reverse that power rule. I'm gonna increase the exponent by one then divide by that new exponent. So big G of X. And let's clean that up is going to be two X to the one half plus C. All right. And again, always need that plus C. All right. So um, I am going to branch off and do two quick others for the moment. I'm going to ask you to kind of memorize. But when we get to, to some techniques of integration, um, that memorization, I will give you context for that memorization. All right. So my next one is h of x equals sine 2x. All right. So if I want to know big H, now remember... We don't have a straight up power rule here. Now this would happen to be, um, if I were doing a derivative, the result would be, this would be like a chain rule result. So there is a way to reverse the chain rule, all right? But we're not gonna go through the entire method now. We're gonna wait until we get to that section. But we're gonna go through a piece of it now. So the piece is this. I'm looking at sine, and the question I need to ask myself is, is there a function whose derivative is sine? All right. So what about cosine? So if I do the derivative of cosine, it is sine, isn't it? All right, well, cosine's not quite right because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So if I have negative cosine, that could fit the bill. Now, the key here, the thing I need you to remember is, and this is the memorization part, whatever number's in here is gonna go in the bottom. 
And like I said, this is just, uh, I'm telling you right now, and I will show you why later. So I'm hoping that you will trust me. All right. So I'm going to do a fairly similar one. All right. So D is little f of x equals e to the negative 3x. So what function has a derivative of e to some power? And it is indeed e to that power, negative 3x. And again, asking you to trust me at this point, that number is what we are going to divide by. Not one half, but one third. All right. I believe I did an initial value problem in a prior video. Um, but... Why don't we try one now? So let's get the next example up. All right, hang on. All right, so here's the problem we're going to look at. V of t is the velocity of the balloon at time t. The acceleration, or A of t, 32, actually negative 32 feet per second squared. If the balloon has an initial velocity of 12 feet per second, meaning the balloon is rising, find V of t. Find a function for the velocity in terms of t. All right, so this is a problem where we can use antiderivatives, but we actually have the information to find out what c is. But let's start from the beginning. The beginning is A of t, right? Our acceleration is the derivative of velocity we got to remember that so that's negative 32 feet per second squared I'm gonna leave out my units until the end all right so now I need to do my antiderivative all right my antiderivative says that V right I'm doing the antiderivative so basically I'm taking away my derivative is gonna be negative 32 T plus C right because this is T to the zero power I'm going to increase my exponent by 1, meaning t to the first, and I'm going to divide by that new exponent. So I'm going to take negative 32 divided by 1 is still negative 32. Now, the initial condition is right here. All right, the balloon has an initial velocity of 12 feet per second. What that means is that v of 0 equals 12. Okay, so I'm going to call this V of T, right? And I can use this to my advantage because basically what I can say is negative 32 times 0 plus C has to equal 12. All right, so if I do negative 32 times 0, that's 0. I get C equals 12. And then V of T, we can finish it off saying negative 32T plus 12. There is my velocity equation. Now, typically in these types of things, there will be some more information about your position equation. So you could do it one more time. I'm just offering this as just a hint as to some initial conditions that can help you find out what C is. Now, I did mention before, and I do want to mention again, all right, my antiderivative is, very, is the same thing as an indefinite integral. All right. And the integral symbol looks like a big S. All right, so it kind of looks like a stretched S. That's the integral symbol. So we are going to, at this point, start integration. So there is a lot of practice to go. Hopefully this will give you a good start, guys. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time.